Okie dokie. So I think we are live. Um, do give me a shout out when you can see that I'm live. I'm just trying to get it up on my phone so that I can um, see everybody here as well. Um, let's see if I can get it to work. It's always a bit tricky, um, things like this, um, trying to get everything to work. But hi, everybody. It's really, really lovely to um, see you all here. Um, I'm just trying to get my... Ooh. Yeah, you can see me, you can hear me. That's amazing. So I can't actually, I can't quite get my um, my YouTube to work on my phone. So we're going to be starting in a second. Um, I'm just going to see if it comes up here. It's not, not, it isn't coming up for me. Never mind, um, Vicky's going to message me if any questions come up um, or if there's anything um, amiss. Brilliant, awesome. Right, okie dokie. So thank you all so much for joining me today. It's really, really amazing to have you all here. It really, really is. It's, um, I love these sessions. If you've joined me before on my live draw alongs, you'll know um, how much I, I absolutely love these sessions. I really, really do. Um, so today we're going to be drawing this kitten. Hopefully you can see on your screen, we've got the, um, uh, the ref photo. I've put the colors in there. I'm going to keep it this size, so um, I'm not going to be um, enlarging it or anything like that, uh, just because it's much easier for me just to sort of crack on. We've got a couple of hours to uh, to work on this. We might not finish it. We'll see how far we get along. Um, okay, so if anybody is struggling with sound, it isn't my end because I've got it all set up properly, but I'm just going to double check. Uh, yeah, yes, all all good my end. So I think we're I think we're okay to start. So it's all going to be recorded. You don't need to worry about that. Um, uh, and you will get a link through tomorrow. Uh, so if there's any any specific questions, I know Vicky's going to come um, through and, and tell me about that. I can't actually see any of the chat because I'm away from my screen. So we're going to make a start. We've got the kitten here. It's not going to be any bigger than this. We're going to work on it at this size. I'm going to start off um, straight away with my black polychromos, which is a little bit strange because normally I start off with um, um, the uh, dark sepia. But I'm going to start off with my black polychromos here. Now, this is going to be um, quite fast. I don't want you to be, all be scared about that. Um, the reason that we go fast is because we haven't got an awful lot of time. And also, the faster we go, um, <laughs> the fast, what do they used to say on the, round, on the roundabouts? The faster you go, the louder we scream. Um, we're not going to be doing any screaming, but the faster we go, the less likely it is that you're going to have any worry about anything <laughs> because you just won't have time. So we're going to start off with our black polychromos. Um, okay, yeah, you can't see me. You can't see me at all. You can only see the cat. There's only the cat here. Um, so I'm going to start off with my black polychromo. So I'm just going to ch uh, check in with Vicky and just make sure that everything is all okay. Um, and sharp black polychromos. And what we're going to do is we're going to just come in and we're just going to put the outline in on the top of the um, on the top of the cat's eye here. So um, off we go. Uh, so I'm using a, a sort of smoothish hot press paper um, and I'm just going to I'm still getting used to my new glasses, I have to say. So we're just going to use, I'd say, medium pressure. We're not going to hang about and put tons and tons of layers in. We're just going to get cracking. So I'm just going to bring in this black here. It's quite small, but we should be fine. So I'm just bringing that in there, all the way down, and we're just going to fit. It's like just like colour by numbers. That's all it is. That's what we're going to be doing. <laughs> colour by numbers with Bonnie on a Saturday, on a Sunday afternoon. So we're just going to come round there, and we're just going to fill all of this in down here. Now, if we were spending fifty hours on this portrait, you know, we'd be looking at layering, and we'd be looking at getting all the different colours and everything into there. We're not spending 50 hours on this portrait, we're spending two, so we're just going to get it whacked in nice and nice and quickly. Um, Okie dokie. So we've got this eye done here, I'm just going to bring a little bit round on the edge here as well, 
so I'm just going to fill this little bit in here. Sharp pencils are quite key uh, for little details like this, whatever the um, surface you're using, even on pastel mat, is quite good to have. Um, oh, I'm just going to move that off a little bit. I've got a bit of a bulge on my paper. Uh, so we've got that that in there. So that's all cool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in the uh, the pupil area there as well. I want to miss out this big white highlight in the middle. So we just got to be really careful. I'm going to fill that in. Usually I'd use sort of like a dark blue in there, but I'm just going to whack the, the black in, which is perfect. So we've got a great little eye there. Um, and I think while I've got my black in the hand, I'm going to go and do the same on the other eye. Um, so we're just going to fill this bit in here as well. Oop. Okay, that was my magnet. Sorry about that. So we're just going to fill that little bit in there. And then we're just going to come down the outside of the eye here. And just bring that down there. The paper I'm using, it's got a bit of a um, got a bit of a bulge on it, so it kind of just pops up from the uh, from the surface of my drawing board a little bit, which is a little bit annoying, but it'll be fine. So we're just going to bring that in there as well, and then just bring a little bit of that in. So easy peasy so far. Um, okay, and then let's just bring that other little bit of the pupil in here as well. So a little bit at the top there. And then down on that bit there. Perfect. Okay, so next what we're going to do, I'm going to get my um, earth green and my, um, yeah, yeah. Mm, no, I'm not going to, I was going to use the ivory. I'm not going to use the ivory actually. I'm going to use my Ouch Warm Grey 2. Um, I'm not used to having sharp pencils. <laughs> I was just stabbing myself. So we're going to start with the Polychromos Warm Grey 2 over the whole of the eye there. Okay, so really nice light pressure. When we talk about light pressure, um, we're talking, uh, if you were to draw on the back of your hand, we don't want to be indenting the skin too much. Um, you know, that sort of hard pressure there where you're really pushing the skin in. So we want nice light pressure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the whole of the iris area of the eye in with this warm grey too. And I'm going to use little round pencil strokes. So we're just going to go in and we're going to use round pencil strokes, trying to keep a relatively even pressure. And we're going to miss out that white bit there that's the highlight we don't want to um, we don't want to bring the highlight in there and then just be careful not to go too close to the black or, or bring the black in because it will it will kind of smudge and bring some of that black into the lighter color so you can see there we've got quite a nice um, uh, bit of color in there and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other eye so we're just going to come in nice and gently so bearing in mind, if you were to do a, 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 a proper full length tutorial with me, um, these eyes, we'd have probably spent about half an hour so far doing these eyes. <laughs> Just goes to show we don't need to spend that long, doesn't it? Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a little bit of this earth green in. When I'm looking at these eyes, actually, they're not that green. There's a l I'm not even sure whether there's any green in them at all, to be honest, but I'm going to bring a little bit in anyway. Um, so I'm going to start on the edge here and I'm going to bring a little bit of green in. Again, nice light pressure. Bring a little bit of green in there. And then I'm going to bring, I want to bring a little bit more sort of dark. I'm going to use the green as the shadow as well, just on the top there. So nice and gently and around the edge down there as well. You want to be going nice and gently. Up on the top there, you can see where there's sort of quite a big shadow up there. And actually the um, the earth green on top of that grey, it stays sort of quite neutral. It stays sort of quite earthy coloured um, rather than going sort of like a bright green. We're not going to end up putting all of the details and everything in the eye because that's not the um, that's not what we're kind of doing here. And then we've got a little bit of a, 
um, a, a weird thing going on in there. Um, and then let's go to the other eye and we're going to do the same with that. So just gently, gently, a little bit darker around the edges where those shadows are. And by doing that, those highlights are just going to stand out a little bit longer. Or a little bit more, should I say. And then we're just going to come down the bottom down here. Nice and gently. And then what I want to do is I actually want to bring a very subtle bit of brown, uh, brownie orange in. And I'm going to use the burnt, um, I'm going to use the burnt umber. There we go. So this is the burnt umber and I'm just going to use a little bit of this. If you haven't got the burnt, uh, the burnt umber, don't worry, use of like I either use a, a burnt ochre or a burnt sienna very, very gently. I'm just going to bring a little bit of that sort of warmth in on the top of the eye up there. Gently, gently. And then I'm just going to bring a little bit out around the edge of that pupil as well. And I'm going to do the same on this eye as well. OK, and then we're kind of gearing up to these ears being done and us making a start on the um, on the indenting. So we're going to do quite a bit of indenting with this piece, um, which takes a little bit of uh, courage. So you've all got to take a deep breath. Um, and just kind of go with it. So those are our little eyes there. I'm going to just take my black again, just darken up my pupils just a little bit. So a little bit harder pressure so we can get those pupils in there. Okay. Um, and we're now going to start on the indenting. So the indenting is quite an important part to this piece because we're a smooth paper. We've got quite a lot of these little hairs and everything that are sticking out everywhere. Uh, and we can't get, on smooth paper with coloured pencils, you can't get light over dark. So you can't actually put a light hair in over the top of a, a dark colour. So with a piece like this, it's really difficult then to, well, you have to make a decision. Do you isolate them? Do you leave all of the white hairs free? In which case do you draw around them? Or do you use a technique that, that is called indenting? And I've got a couple of um, tools that I've got here. I've got a, this one's got a bent end. It doesn't come with a bent end, but this is an embossing tool. Uh, it's got two ends, it's got a thicker end, and it's got a, um, a a slightly smaller end here. And then I've also got a clay making tool, which has got a much wider end, but it's still really, really good. So this one's really good for whiskers and stuff like that. So we're going to be incredibly brave right at the beginning. We're going to put our whiskers in with the indenting tool. We're going to put all of the little white hairs in the ears in, and we're going to put sort of like some hairs up on the top of the head in as well. Now, the... All I can say about this is um, just go for it. Don't worry if it looks if it doesn't look anything like you're hoping it to look like. It's it's a technique that actually you need an awful lot of practice at, but it's, it is quite useful for this kind of thing. Um, the more little hairs you have, the better the result because they'll actually look like little hairs rather than sort of a couple just sort of sparsely spotted. They don't look like anything. Um, so we've got to be a little bit brave. So I'm going to start with my um, clay making tool and I'm going to start bringing the whiskers in. Now the pressure here is really key. It's really important to get the pressure right. You're better to go a little bit harder um, than a little bit softer uh, because you what you want to do is you want to make a mark in the paper that so when you bring your pencils in they skip over that mark. I don't think you're going to go through your paper, um, but just just be mindful not to go like really, really hard with it. Um, and once you get going, once you've done one, you can tell I'm procrastinating now, but once you've done one, then it, it's a lot easier. So I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to go for it. It doesn't matter if we don't have them in the right places. You're probably not going to be able to see where I'm putting my whiskers. You can kind of see where my mark, the um, clay making tools going. And that's all that matters really. And then once once you get going, that's it. You just like, whisker happy you're just going everywhere and then let's just put some in down here as well so it's just like you basically just um almost like with a white pencil or something like that you're bringing these whiskers in try to keep your the pressure the same all the way through so that you don't just get hard, hard whiskers at the top and then they just drift off then i'm going to move to my smaller indenting tool here and I'm going to come up to my ear and this is where it all starts to get a little bit, ooh, but we're not going to worry about that. And we're just going to start 
almost like you're just drawing these hairs. So just think of this as a pencil and we're just going to start drawing these little hairs in. So we're thinking about drawing them in the direction that they're growing. Um, this is a fun creative exercise that we're doing today. It's not about creating, you know, um, something that's going to go into a gallery or anything like that. It's about us having fun all together. So just let your hair down. Just just give it a go. Um, and don't worry if things aren't perfect because we don't want anything perfect anyway. We just want to have fun. Um, and then what you can do is you can then start to perfect this technique afterwards you can practice it and um you know give it give it a go so unfortunately you can't really see what i'm doing <laughs> um but just just have a think about you know where these little hairs are going so uh, the length of them the direction of them and um, we're just gonna sort of pull them in there we've got these ones here so i'm just gonna poke them in there And then come onto the face here as well. So just bring some of these little white ones in here. So I'm using quite hard pressure, but not not so much to, as to damage the the surface. Um, I can kind of see where I've been going. I really need to go in the in the um, the direction of the growth of the hair, but actually it's it's working better if I pull it down. It doesn't have to be a specialist tool. I know somebody last week was using a fork. Um, you could use like a Kirby grip. Uh, you could use an old um, biro that's run out of ink. Uh, anything like that uh, is gonna work just fine. And then I'm just gonna bring a little bit of that through here as well. I'm not gonna do this all over the cat. I'm just gonna kind of work on the, let's just get some of these little whiskers in here as well. Sorry about the noise. I'm just going to pull a little bit up there as well. Um, it's not so bad when you've got these areas where they've got like little. Um, mostly white and then you've got little bits of brown because that's not too difficult you know you can kind of get the um, the white in first and then put those little bits of brown it's just where the hairs kind of go in over the top of um, the dark that it all gets a little bit let me just have a look in there I'm sure there's going to be some places where I've forgotten to put it in and then let's just move over to this here as ear as well and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to get our color pencils out and we're going to start actually putting some um, proper colors in get those little whiskers in there And just make sure that you've got your those little hairs going in the direction that you want them to go in and then it's all going to um, work quite nicely okay let's come around the edge of this ear here and think i put any in there and then let's look in there you might have to sort of look at your paper on an angle just to see where everything everything's going and what's happening. Uh. Okie dokes. Right, so um, the first colour I'm going to put in, we're going to start on this ear area here. The first colour I'm going to put in is the buff titanium. Um, where is it? So it's quite a light colour. Uh, I'm also going to bring a little bit of the um, Burn Umber 10% in as well. And I'm just going to start to, to bring in a little bit of colour. So it's the Luminance Buff Titanium. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring colour in over the ear area here. So I'm just going to bring it all over 
quite roughly. You'll start to see some of those little hairs starting to appear. Now my line art, I'm very lazy when it comes to line art on hot press paper, my line art has been um, printed onto my paper which is very 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 lazy of me so I can't rub it out so um, I might end up with a little bit of residue on there which I'm, I'm fine with for this particular piece. Um, yours you'll be able to rub out as you go along so I'm just bringing a little bit of that creamy colour into there and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in over the um, the rest of the cat down here as well and I'm going to bring that buff titanium in quite roughly you can see I'm sort of not being particularly careful what I'm doing I'm just sort of whacking that colour in I'm sort of following where these blocks of colour are going but I'm also bringing into those darker areas as well so where we've got all of those uh, little indents in there pop them in there don't need to really bring a, an awful lot of the the color into the top bit there because it's all mostly brown um, and then I'm going to bring it down into this nose area here so this is this is you know a, a proper a proper speedy drawing we're not hanging about we're not you know thinking about multiple layers and being really really uh, particular and, and precise with our colors and everything we're just we're just going for it um, some may say I'm drawing at my normal regular speed, <laughs> um, but I'm not. I am definitely going much faster, um, and we're not being quite as um, quite as careful. So what we've got now is we've got the top of the cat's head um, with uh, covered in that in that buff titanium. So that's the first colour that we've put on. Um, and then I'm going to bring a little bit of the um, the burnt um, the uh, the burnt umber ten percent in uh, the raw umber ten percent in. Sorry, I'm just going to bring a little bit of that kind of through, um, just to get a little bit of shaping around the edge of the ear here. Uh, it's very much sort of more of a, a sketchy a sketchy piece than anything you know particularly. Uh, um, it's going to look realistic, but it's you know it's not going to. It's not going to be highly highly detailed or anything. And then what I want to do is bring some of this grey into the, um, the sort of like the, the inside of the ear here. And this is where you're going to be able to see the hair is starting to come out. Um, the darker the colours are that go in, the more those little hairs will stand out. We've got some pink in there as well. And then I'm just going to come down, down the edge here a little bit sort of up to, I'm using I'd say probably a medium pressure just just so I'm getting some uh, you know some color onto the paper and we're just going to come down there and then we can start to bring a little bit of the detaily bits into here as well so it's almost like it's the it's the opposite of working on drafting film where we put all our colors in first and then we scrape it off with the indenting method we put the indents in first and then put the color in um you know and and it and it does work really really nicely okay and then i'm just going to bring a little bit of that up into there so that's all cool and that now what i want to do is the first color i'm going to put into the middle of this ear bit is the cold gray one so this is the cold gray one i know i'm going super super fast and you're probably thinking oh my goodness bonnie slow down but um um we haven't got long and um you know we can we can we can catch up afterwards and and it's it, this basically do it at this speed to stop you from getting all bogged down with trying to get all of the tiny little details in which we don't need so i'm just going to come in round pencil strokes again we're just going to whack this gray in just sort of halfway down i'm going to bring a little bit of this gray back up here again bring it up to the top there And then I'm going to bring some of the pink in um, into the ear down here. So I've got I've got two pinks. I've got um, I've got cinnamon and I've got uh, granite rose. And I'm going to use the cinnamon um, down into this bottom bit down here. And we're just going to build the pinky colours up. So I'm just going to bring all of that. We don't need to worry about loads and loads of little details or anything like that. 
uh, we're just going to use the values to be able to show um, how the ears are working. You can see those little white hairs coming through there now. Okay, just bring that up there a little bit and then I'm going to bring a little bit of that cinnamon again just up onto the top there. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some of that Caput Morton Violet, so that really dark red, and we're just going to darken up some of these areas in here before moving on to. So it's just a case of, sort of looking where there's some dark areas and just to bringing in those little sort of shadowy bits in there. So we've got a little bit darker in there. Let's bring that darker colour in there so we get those uh, hairy bits sticking out nicely. A little bit darker in there. Going up there. Just have a bit of water so my voice doesn't go. Okay, and then I can just bring a little bit of that red down into there as well. We don't have to have it exactly the same as the photograph, but. Uh, but we've got some nice colour going on in there. And then I'm just going to take that um, buff titanium again and I'm just going to bring that in over the top just so it sort of blends everything in again. It was almost like it's burnishing it in. Okay. Um, right, so um, next colour I want to use is the, is the walnut brown. And we're just going to bring some of these darker little bits of hairs in. So we're just going to bring the walnut brown in sort of sketch those hairs in it's a it's a really good way of drawing is this because it really does stop you from being precious about what it is that you're doing it just forces you to put the uh, color and the uh, marks down on the paper um you know being trying to be perfect uh, just it can really steal all of the joy out of being creative trying to get everything absolutely perfect and you know, people look at my work and go, but Bonnie, yours is perfect. And I'm like, well, it isn't. I make do an awful lot of the time. I'm like, mm, yeah, that'll do. It'll be fine. But I never, ever strive for it to be per perfect. There's certain things I strive for, and that's for, um, you know, for it to look realistic. And, I, you know, I want it obviously to the, the best that I can I can do at that point in time. But I never strive for it to be perfect because I don't even know what perfect would look like, to be honest. Um, and I, I just... I. I draw because I love to draw and um, and that's what's really important for me so we're just trying to get rid of that that perfectionism um, because it, it can really really destroy that, the, the the lovely feel that you get when you're drawing okay so I'm just bringing a little bit of the, that brown around there we can increase the, the pressure a little bit just to get some of those darker darker bits in I'm using a paper called um, uh, nostalgia. This is the Hannah Muller Nostalgia that I'm using. I've not used it for a while actually. I drew the owl on it um, and uh, I was looking for looking through all my papers yesterday I was thinking oh actually yes I think we'll I think we'll go with that one and um, it's quite smooth but it does take quite a lot of layers I have to say. Uh, it's quite a nice quite a nice paper so then I'm going to come around here and I'm just going to bring a little bit of those hairy bits up there as well and then we've got this um, edgy bit here which I'm going to bring the raw umber in so any colour that you can just sort of whack down a bit of something nice and softly so I'd use a luminance for doing this because you're going to get a, a softer lay down and then I'm just going to bring that um, walnut brown back in again and just gently bring in a little bit of sort of fluffy fur at the back of the ear there so you can see my pencils are kind of going backwards and forwards, 10 to the dozen. Um, I tend to kind of use my pencils like that. I tend to keep them on the paper and just move the pencil around so we get this sort of softer, um, softer feel to the fur. Okay, cool. 
Okie dokie. So I want to come over um, the side of the face here. Um, let's bring in a little bit of the colour in here. So I'm going to choose my um, uh, brown ochre 10%. Now I'll put that back again. Where is it gone? There we go. So brown, did I say brown ochre 10%? I think I did. I think I did. Oh, let me just check. Yeah, brown ochre 10%, cool. Um, yeah, so I'm going to bring a little bit of the brown ochre 10% and we're going to start working um, in this sort of yellowy area here. So this is a really great colour for animals. Um, all of the luminance pencils, I have to say, are really, really great colours for animals. So I'm just going to come through here. I was sort of deliberating whether I should be putting the darks in first or the lights in first. And I decided last night to put the lights in first because um, it means I can get the darks over the top. Um, whereas if I kind of put the darks in first, which I, I can do, um, it just makes it a little bit more tricky, really. So and we want to keep it as... Uh, as simple as possible. So just block that in there where that orangey bit is. I'm just going to bring a little bit of that up into there as well. I'm going to come up here and just bring some of the that sort of yellowy bit in there as well. And then I'm going to come down here and just pull a little bit of that into there too. Um, okay, that's all good. And then we're going to go with the, I'm going to go with the dark sepia. Um, so just a dark, a dark grey basically. And we're just going to bring a few little bits of um, that darker grey just into here. Watch that you don't put a, a great big blob of it in. You want it still to be sort of quite nice and soft in there. And then I'm just going to, oops. I'm just going to use that raw umber 10% again um, into this area here as well. And then I can just bring a little bit of this raw umber down into here too. And then I'm just going to bring tufts of that up there. Okay, right. So now what I want to do is just sort of work on this area here. There's quite a lot of white in here, and the the browns are are, are quite dark. So I'm going to use a mixture of walnut brown and the uh, dark sepia. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring the dark sepia in here. I'm just going to bring a few little bits in. through there so we've got to be careful not to it's very very easy when you're using a dark pencil just to kind of whack a load of color in and then the whole area then becomes really dark uh, we've got to be sort of mindful of the i guess the percentage almost of light and dark fur and when you look at this there's actually more light fur than there is dark the white fur is sitting on the top um you know so uh We've just got to be kind of mindful for that and we've got a lot of those little hairs placed in with the indenting which we can sort of see coming through now which is working quite nicely again using your pencil this is all kind of curved around the cat's eye here so we've got to be you know be um on the lookout for where the hair changes direction one of the well i think yeah i think it is one of the most important things of, of any sort of if you're drawing anything realistic particularly animals, making sure that your hair, when you draw hair, it's going in the right direction of the growth and it's the right length. Um, you know, what happens is, so say you take a quite a smooth haired animal like a Labrador, say, their heads are quite smooth. They tend to have very short, sort of smooth, silky hair. If you end up with 
too long a um, fur strokes on the top of the head what tends to happen is they end up taking on like a bit of a texture and then they end up looking like they've got really sort of fluffy fur um, and that's not that's not what Labrador fur is like so you've got to be really really careful that your the texture of your fur and the the length is is correct and it's right for the animal that you're drawing the fur quality that you're drawing that's a really really important thing to remember okay I'm going to just switch over now I'm going to use the walnut brown and bring a little bit of that walnut brown into here To bring some of this walnut brown into here as well and then we're going to do a bit of shading in here too just pulling that up and then i'm going to bring some of the little bits of the walnut brown in over the top of the brown ochre 10 percent we don't want to obliterate it we just want to bring a little bit of shading in so it gives it that sort of 3D effect. We can see that there's, um, it's kind of curving around the cat's head and we've got some different values in there, different um, darks and lights in there. So coming through there, just bring a little bit of that fuzziness on, on the edge there. A bit, um, you can hear my drawing board making some wobbly noises. Okay, I'm just going to keep with the walnut brown, I'm just going to bring a little bit of the hair through here. And then we've got this dark, um, this little dark bit here as well, which I'm going to come to in a second. I just want to finish the rest of the head up here. More darker in there. You might have to come back again and just um, get a bit more um, depth in some of these areas. Right, so I'm going to take my dark, uh, my walnut brown again, and we're just going to come up into this top area here, and we're just going to bring in. When you're bringing these little tufts of hair up over the, over the top of an animal's head, um, the best thing to do is is to start with. Uh, lightish pressure and then just flick your pencil upwards and just let it just drift off at the top that way you, it's going to taper out naturally and you're going to get a much nicer feel uh, at the top of the head you're going to get that nice sort of fluffy feel um you can see i'm just sort of i've also my pencil's not quite as sharp as it was and that again gives me quite a nice soft feel um, when it comes to the fur on the top of the head up here so we've got a few of those little white hairs in there. And this time my pencil strokes are just one pencil stroke straight up. And I'm just gonna come onto the ear there as well. And again, we're just gonna bring some little tiny um, bits of fur off there. Um, right, and then let's just come down. Uh, in fact, I'm going to bring a little bit of the uh, dark sepia into these really dark areas so that they're in. I've increased my pressure just a little bit so that I'm getting nice dark um, colour in there. And I'm going backwards and forwards again. Um, don't worry if you're kind of looking at the, your line drawing, thinking, mm, I don't know where I don't know where to put my you know my colour um, I don't know either so don't worry about it <laughs> I always get confused when it comes to tabby cats I'm like which which what have I drawn here which bits which 
um because i've got a line here and i have no idea what it is um, but i think this is the correct one and this is what i mean you know you can get really really hung up on having everything perfect and then you end up spending most of your time worrying about what your drawing's going to look like rather than spending all of your time really really enjoying actually doing the drawing um, and it's the doing bit it's the actual the process of the drawing that is the most important part that's the bit that's going to bring you all of the joy it's not not really the end result i mean the end result obviously is important if you're drawing something for somebody or you want to put it on social media but the bit that brings you all of that incredible joy and you know mindfulness and just amazingness comes from the actual doing it's the the process um and we end up getting so hung up on the process that we we forget to actually enjoy what we're doing um so uh, right yeah to totally lost where i am there but anyway we'll just make it up as we go along it'll be fine so i'm going to come back to the walnut brown again and we're just going to come in here again just get that nice softness we've got a few random little white hairs in there which is all fine and then I'm just going to bring a little bit of that brown in there as well. That's all fine. And then I just want to deepen this brown up here. And then I'm going to bring my um, uh, brown ochre through again. Just going to bring a little bit of that brown ochre into there. And then very, very, very gently with my um, walnut brown, I'm just going to bring this little part of the, um, the nose in down here. Again, I'm going to be really looking at my hair direction. And we're just going to sort of bring in these little brown marks. So little bits of fur. Nice and short. Just bring a little bit of that into there as well. And then just pull that up there. We've got a lot of that, um, the white hair up there as well. And that's quite pale that side. To be fair, the whole kitten photograph's quite pale. Um, you know but actually that's what i quite like about it because it means that we don't have to get really really brave and getting any massive um, values in here just gonna pull that around there and again just kind of cur curling around the eye there so i'm using this very gently over the top of that buff to tendon that we put in originally and um, just bringing that in there and then I just want to darken these just a little bit more we'll come down to sort that bit out in a minute and then I'm just going to bring this dark oops dark sepia in again we're just going to darken these areas just a little bit more And then just bring some of these darker bits into here too. Not 
tends to happen quite a lot with um, with hot press papers and smoother papers is that you end up losing some of your value because the tooth sort of pops back up again so you've got to go back in and sort of um, get your darks back in Gonna darken this bit up here as well. Okay, and then let's just go into this little ear here. Um, so I'm gonna use my um, brown ochre ten percent. We're just gonna get that creamy colour in on the top there. A little bit of that creamy colour in there as well. And then I'm going to use the um, warm grey four. I'm just going to bring on a little bit of those the shading into here. Warm grey fours are really, really great colour for just adding sort of subtle uh, values to, to different colours like yellows and all of that kind of thing because it doesn't really, it doesn't change the um, the colour too much. It just sort of helps create like a nice little little shadow. So this is. Um, I like my warm grey four, I use it an awful lot. So we're just going to come through this way. And then bring a little bit of shading in there. Bring a little bit of shading in there. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to come down onto the bottom of the face here. So we're going to start on this area here. And again, I'm going to bring the, the colour in. So I'm going to use my uh, brown ochre 10% first of all. I'm going to come down and around. We're going to miss out the stripey bit. So this was a really dark stripey bit. I'm going to miss that out for now. around here just watch that I don't um, end up uh, creating all of this white area I don't want to end up um, making that all yellow and again just watching the fur direction And then I'm going to take my um, buff titanium again, and we're just going to bring that through, through down into here. And then I want to bring a little bit of this through into the nose area here as well. Just nice and gently. And around the eye. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to... Um, I'll just bring a little bit down into there as well. We're going to introduce some of the darker shading into there. Um, so I'm going to use the um, dark sepia and we're going to come through and create this dark area here. So we're coming from that eye area. And 
and they're just sort of bringing in that dark stripe but then it's sort of it's not just a, a solid dark stripe it kind of bleeds into the color next to it um, and that's what we need to kind of get really we need to get that idea that that, that it's not just a harsh stripe it's um, you know it actually kind of moves into the color um, that's next to it and that's really really important when it comes to fur to make it look real is getting it to um, to connect with whatever it is that's sitting next to it whatever kind of fur you, you're drawing and I'm just going to pull this you see I'm just starting to bring a little bit this way so it kind of creates the look that there's a bit of, of the white hair going in over the top darken that up a little bit okay and then I'm going to come again with the dark sepia we're going to come into here very very gently bring some of that dark sepia in over the top of that brown ochre so we get some of those little patches of a slightly darker value in there and then this is much darker in here So we've got those little shapes that we've got from the line art, which is great. Um, but it's still really, really important to look at your reference photo and, and follow what's on there. Because it's very often you might have drawn a line and then when you come to draw it, you have no idea what that line is. I do that all of the time. So we've got that coming down here and then we've got these little bits which are sort of um they're not lines they're more sort of shadows where the hair just sort of changes a little bit and we've got like a little bit of a, a, a rough almost so i'm using lighter pressure when i put this color on the top so it's not this really dark color that's going on it's a much paler color And it's more a case of sort of shading in over the top of that yellowy colour that we put in first. And then we can make some of these little fur details. So I've gone into sort of drawing like little with little, almost like dots, just to bring the idea of the fur coming in on the side of the face here. and then I'm just going to bring a little bit more I'm going to put a bit of brown I think or maybe a little bit of orange on the top of this as well um, let's bring a bit more of that dark sepia in and then I'm going to bring some of that walnut brown in down here again you want that connection so you're coming from that's a bit too harsh there that nice soft colour kind of coming under that And again, I'm going to bring, bring a little bit of this brown through, not, not to make this fur here brown as such, but just to, um, just to get a little bit of um, interest into here. We don't just want to leave it that sort of pale colour. We want a little bit of that fur detail in there. And then I can come up a little bit and just bring... bits to the edge there and then we can bring a little bit more into here um, that's good okay and then let's just bring a little bit more of this um, walnut brown 
I quite like this paper. I have to say, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of um, of smooth paper. Um, you know, my my absolute love of my life is pastel mat. I, I just absolutely adore it. I, it can be incredibly frustrating, but the results always end up um, just amazing. Um, so smooth paper is not a not a not a firm favourite really, but um, I don't mind this. And the the owl turned out really quite nice. So the only problem with this paper is it's just a little bit thin. Um, you know, so you've got to be you've got to be sort of careful when you're manoeuvring it. Uh, it can sort of mark. Um, right, okay, so um, let's move on to his little um, face here. I'm going to use all of the pencils today. I'm going to get the um, burnt sienna, and we're just going to bring a little bit of the burnt sienna down on the outside of his little eye here. Um, and I'm just going to bring that all the way down. Sorry about the noise, that's my son arriving home. Um, and we're just going to bring a little bit of that through here. So it's sort of like a, an orangey red that we're putting in there. So I'm just bringing that down into there. Um, and now they're going to have a conversation outside my children. So you'll all be able to hear what they're up to. Um, okay, and then now what I want to do is I just want to, before we start putting any details or anything, I just want to bring in the colour for the nose area. And for that, I'm going to use a mixture of the raw umber and the burnt ochre. Um, so I'm going to start off with the burnt ochre very, very gently. We're going to look at the fur direction. So it's kind of going in like a rosette fashion. Um, and then if I, if I blow this kitten up, what happens is, I, I zoom into it on my iPad, not blow it up. Um, the hair actually on the edge just kind of comes round like this and it almost comes down and then on, on the top bit here it changes direction again so it, again it's very very important to get that direction in if you can't see the direction of an animal's fur and you're thinking well i just, just don't know what direction it is going in don't put any direction in at all just bring in um flat color and just bring in a little bit of value to help with the shading and the um, the structure and everything like that. But if you're not overly certain about um, the direction of an animal's fur, it's always best not to guess, um, because it can it can end up completely changing the the structure of the face. Um, okay, so I'm going to come back down here again. So it's a little bit complicated down here because we've obviously got a, a, a structure there's you know the nose there's sort of in bits there's out bits so we need to kind of get this area correct otherwise it'll end up looking a little bit strange um for this kind of thing for me less is always more even when i'm doing a very detailed portrait with something that's got a, a, a lot of structure or some strange hairs and everything going on the less uh work you can do on it the better so it's it's about sort of getting getting the information in um, and not doing too much with it. Um, OK, I'm going to go straight in with the uh, walnut brown and we're just going to oh no, I'm not. I'm going to go in with the dark sepia and I'm just going to darken up this little bit here. So we can see that that just kind of dips in there, the side of the nose. And then we just bring a little bit further down onto the edge of the nose there. And then I'm just going to darken this bit here as well. So with the dark sepia. So we've got bits of that um, burnt sienna showing. And we'll just darken that up a little bit more. And then I can just sort of bring that fur around in this bit here as well. And then we've got this, let's just bring this little bit in from the eye there as well. Perfect. Okay, and then um, 
come back down here again with those little hairs onto the side of the or underneath the eye there and then we can pull in these little whiskery bits again we don't need to be really really specific and then I'm going to just use the that brown brown ochre 10% again just in here just to get that little the whiskery bits in there and go over the top of those dark areas and I'm going to bring a little bit more into there as well that's it and then Uh, through into there okay and then let's just get this little nose in um uh okay so i'm just going to bring the dark sepia in and we're going to just outline the top of that nose there and we're just going to outline this little nostril Probably need to sharpen my pencil a bit and we're going to bring this little bit there down oh, I'm sorry somebody's got a motorbike outside who on earth is that <laughs> so I haven't got a clue who that is some some strange old man on a motorbike outside my house. I don't know who it is. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to come down and we're just going to very, very gently just bring in the, um, the little bit of the mouth here. So again, less is, less is more. So I'm just bringing these little, little bits in just to kind of indicate where that little mouth is there. Um, and that's all, that's all we need there. And then I'm going to bring some of that cinnamon in. Um, into the nosy area here so we'll come come through here and just bring it down there and then I can bring that dark sepia back in and we can just do a little bit of shading on the edges there and here as well I've got my windows open sorry it's quite warm here well it's not very warm if you we're in the UK so it's never really very warm but it's quite warm for me okay and then we're going to do a little bit of there we go and we don't really need to do much more than that at all because again less is less is much much more we just need to indicate what it is and then I'm just going to use that dark sepia just to bring this little top bit in here and perfect um, right, okay, so um, I'm going to bring a little bit of the um, walnut brown in just around here. Again, just nice and gentle, just to get an idea of the little fur strokes. In there. And then let's just work on the other side of the face and then we can work on that bottom bit there. So I'm going to use the raw umber 10% uh, on the other side. So I'm just going to slightly bring that colour in there. Again, just watch. Well, I've gone a bit gung-ho there, but um, just watch that you don't end up having two harsh uh, pencil lines coming off uh, the edge of the face there. This is quite a nice um, uh, pose that the kitten's got here. It's quite a nice, the, the, the way the face is looking is quite nice actually, uh, because it gives us the, uh, the opportunity to get a little bit of that structure and everything in without it being sort of face on. So 
So just bringing all of that through there and get those whiskery bits in. Now, if I was doing this as a tutorial that was going to take hours and hours and hours, um, I, I, I don't think I would use the indenting method. I would probably do this on pastel mat. Or if I was going to use the indenting method, um, I would probably spend quite a lot of time plotting all of the hairs in, um, you know, just to make sure that I've got everything in the in the right places. This is the buff titanium that I'm just using here around the top of that little eye there um, and then I'm going to come back in again with the I'm going to use the dark sepia and we're just going to get a little bit more just around the eye there nice and gently so we get a bit of a shadow but it's not like a, a big dark mark um, and then I'm just going to come down here I'm just going to bring a little fuzzy line in there Um, and then I'm going to bring again, just 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 starting. There's like that little ledgy bit underneath their eye, isn't there? Where the uh, where the, that that sort of change of colour, the cheek bony bit. And um, just very 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 gently, because we don't want to make it a dark. We don't want to make it a dark colour, but we want that structure in there. We want to be able to see some of those um, little fluffy bits. We can see where those whiskers are coming through now as well. And then this is a little bit darker in here too. Now I find I find doing this kind of thing, getting the whiskers in first, what then happens is my brain automatically wants my pencil to go in the same direction as the whiskers. And I find that quite tricky. So my, my fur actually is going this way, but my brain is telling me it needs to go this way because it needs to follow the direction of the um, whiskers. And that's when I have to switch my brain off um, which sounds very odd, but a lot of the time when I'm drawing, I do have to just sort of go, mm, I need to go into sort of manual mode, not auto mode, because if you go into auto mode, your brain does all sorts of weird things. Okay, so next I'm just going to take that Caput Morton Violet, and we're just going to bring a little bit of that just into the mouth area here. Not, not too much, just sort of sketch it in so we get a little bit of pinkiness in there. Nice and gently. Um, and then this, the hair down here, let's, I'm gonna use the buff titanium. So I'm gonna go more creamy than anything else. We've already got a bit of buff titanium in there. Um, it is a little bit more whitey, but I'm just gonna stick with the buff titanium in there. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I want to bring the brown ochre in again, just under here to get this, um, Again, just kind of watch the direction of the fur. I'm not putting the, the brownie colour in everywhere because we've got some of that um, raw rumber in there as well. But uh, let's just bring a little bit of this down into here. Okay, and then this side down here, this is more going to be that raw rumbery um, colour. In fact, I think I'm going to use the, the warm grey too down here. No, I'm not. I'm going to use the raw rumber, sorry. Um, so I'm going to bring it in here even though I'm going to put the brown in there. Don't worry if this bit starts to flummox you. It'll flummox me as well. Cat fur, when it comes to big chunky bits like this, is a, is a nightmare. <laughs> and the, the best way to get it to look like it's this fluffy cat hair is to concentrate on the shadows rather than anything else. So just sort of, you know, wacky colour in. Don't worry too much about, you know, what it's going to look like. Um, we can always just chop it off and have the head, can't we? That'd be fine. Like I say, you know, it. We honestly, it's it's so nice to draw and not have to be worrying about it all being absolutely perfect. Which sounds really strange from somebody who, you know, makes a living from creating portraits from people and teaching people to draw. But actually, that whole kind of being a little bit liberated in not worrying about stuff ends up with you doing a better job 
which sounds crazy but it, it's really true um you know because otherwise it could be sort of like oh i've got to rub this bit out and i've got to rub this bit out i'm i'm i tell you now i i hardly ever rub anything out i just sort of work with either the mistake that i've got or um if i'm working on pasta mat i just layer over the top of it so i've hardly ever um you know rub something out because i think i've made a mistake and that's not because i'm you know such a brilliant artist that i don't make mistakes because i do make mistakes it's just that i don't i don't get hung up on them and i just use what i've done and work it into um you know what i'm doing so here we need to just bring a little bit more value under here so that we can show where the cat's head is attached to the neck and i'm still using the raw rumba 10 percent here i really like this color uh, it's very very good for uh, animals it's that sort of nice it's like a, a brownie gray color it's a really really good color and you can see there again i can just bring in some little darker little darker bits in there as well i really like the luminance on this paper i have to say the luminance are working very nicely on this and then i'm just going to pull a little bit over to there what time are we on oh my goodness 10 past 10 past three we've got 50 minutes left right supersonic speed press the button off we go <laughs> um right so i'm going to bring a little bit of the brown in there so the walnut brown we're going to come into here and start to bring a little bit of that in again you can see i'm going backwards and forwards with my pencil strokes we want to get the nice sort of softness of the fur so it's a little bit sketchy um, but it means that we get some movement into the fur in there which is really really nice we don't want something that's really static um you know it's uh, for me it's really important to get life and movement into my portraits and i don't want something looking like it's been to the groomers or anything like that you know i, I like to have a little bit of craziness crazy hair going on in my portraits i've had i've had um clients actually say to me oh you know can you do draw, draw this horse for me blah 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 and then they'll say oh can you just calm his mane down a little bit flatten the mane and do this that and the other and I I try to talk them out of it because for me it just gives just the personality and everything of um, you know of, of the animal to have a little bit of the, the the crazy hair going on right and then I'm going to come in with a little bit of that um, dark sepia into here as well again just to create a little bit of depth and through there not everywhere but just you know in places just pulling out a few of those little darker darker hairs okay awesome um, and then I'm just going to come in with that um, raw rumba 10% again. And I'm just going to uh, just kind of come over the top of those hairs there and almost burnish them so that we get a softness. So a bit more pressure just coming in over the top. So if you're using um, if you're using prismas or anything like that today, you'll probably find that they they're working really really nicely. They're a nice soft pencil that will work well on this kind of paper. Okay, and then I'm just going to come in with these fluffy bits here. What I'm going to try and do is just um, kind of work on the shadowy bits around them so that we can see there's a little bit of texture going on. and almost sort of sketch in what the hairs look like. So I've still got my raw umber here. You can see this bit of fur kind of coming down there. So I don't think we're gonna get the, the, the whole kitten finished today, but I think you'll have enough information to be able to um to be able to finish it um you know because you'll just use the same the same techniques 
um, but hopefully we can get this bit done and, the, and um, some of the paw the paws done the, the paws I think are, are quite a nice thing to draw so I'm just coming over this area here again just using the um, the raw umber 10% I might just um, I might just use my putty eraser just to lighten some of these areas in a minute. Okay, and then I'll, oh, what are you doing this? Oh, Vinny's <laughs> Vinny's joining in now. He's dreaming. <laughs> Vinny, what are you doing? Okay, this is the buff titanium now. I'm just um, pulling this into here. Good. Okay, so I'm just going to get my um, I'm just going to get my putty eraser, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, just lift a little bit. It's not going to do a, a huge amount, but it, all it's going to do is it's just going to lighten up some of these areas. dropping pencils on the floor right so let's now just look at um, just pulling a little bit more um, I'm going to use the raw umber polychromos raw umber and we're just going to bring a little bit of these uh, that might be a bit too yellowy actually yeah no I'm not going to use that one I'm going to stick with my um, walnut brown And we're just going to bring a little bit of structure in, into the shadowy bits. And then here we've got this darker area. Just nice and gently. Don't forget to bring that bit of a curve in there as well. And we can just, I like to go kind of up and under when I'm drawing shadows. Is it almost, it kind of, kind of going up and under. as well just these little tufty light tufty pencil strokes um, you know not you don't need to be too specific but this kind of thing sketchy is good because it will it will look more realistic um, at the, in the early stages more into here as well like I say my outline is printed on because I'm particularly lazy um, but you can either incorporate yours or rub, rub your outline out I don't print my um, outlines for um, tutorials and uh, commissions usually because I tend to use uh, pastel matte and drafting film but just with something like this it was just oh, you know it works quite well actually just coming down here we've got this darker little patch in here as well 
goodness knows what that is. And then just bring that up there. Um, right, so I'm going to bring a little bit of the uh, brown ochre 10% and I'm going to come in over the top of those brown marks and I'm just going to use a little bit heavier pressure just squash the, uh, the pigment into the tooth of the paper so that we get a little bit of blending and we also get slightly richer uh, colour. It gives it a warmer feel. So you'd be using just a little bit heavier pressure in there. as well need to go much darker in there but we'll do that when we bring these little um bring these little pores in okay so we're going to bring the bring the pores in i'm just going to put all of my um, pencils down now Okay, so for the pores, what I want to do is I want to um, start off with the walnut brown. Uh, no, I'm going to start off with the buff titanium and I'm just going to colour all of the pores in. So literally just, just whack your colour in. whack it all in doesn't matter if you've got gaps in there or anything like that um, because we're going to come over the top and then I'm just going to bring a little bit of that buff titanium in there as well and I'm going to bring a little bit in there as well just to sort of smooth off smooth off those oh we need to finish this face here as well let's just finish this off before um, in here I'm going to use the uh, warm grey 4 on his little face here and I'm just going to bring just little tiny bits of fur uh, down here. It's a bit darker than on the photograph but that's okay. see those whiskers in there right so we're going to switch on to the um, walnut brown and what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of sketch in the almost straight away with the detail in here just on the edge here Just nice and gently, just coming in with a few of those little hair details. And then with the, the fluffy paw, we want to kind of get that sort of fluffy feeling. So I'm just going to kind of use like, a, like almost like a zigzag pencil motion. So it's just kind of zigging, zagging backwards, forwards. We're just bringing in some sort of rough ideas of fur in here. When we get down to these little claw bits, we're just going to go a little bit um, heavier with the pressure, but only a tiny bit, and then back to those little zigzaggy uh, pencil marks. Again, down here, a little bit harder. So they're just really, it's just really, really soft. 
and it's just an idea of the fur that's going on in there. This is much darker in here because it's the shadow. So we can just make that a little bit darker. And I'm going to use my brown ochre and I'm just going to come in in places and just come over the top of and just bring in a little bit of that yellowiness in there and I'm going to bring a little bit of that in there as well okay and then I'll take the dark sepia in these little areas I'm a little bit fat as this pull I just want to darken that up again and then I'm just going to bring that Brown in again here. Okay, and then we've got this pore here. Again, just bring in a little bit of that toughness. Oh, sorry, that's my daughter now. Goodness knows where she's been. I always have that music on far too loud. <laughs> it's like having a bit of an intermission, isn't it? comes around there, a little bit of dark in there and then this bit here is kind of on the top of the, the leg area and again we'll just bring some little spiky bits up there just gently gently Don't worry about getting it all absolutely perfect. We just want an idea of little soft paws. We can just bring a little bit of a, a little bit of a shadow in there as well. Um, okay, and then the uh, brown ochre again. Bring a little bit of that onto there. And we'll just get that nice fluffiness. So round and round, backwards and forwards, bit ziggy zaggy. I'm gonna get that um raw rumba 10% in there as well and then I'm just going to get a little bit of this raw rumba 10% in here as well just get a bit more of a shadow in there
okay um, and then I'm going to bring a little bit of this the raw rumber in onto here as well so we've got that little bit of texture in there and then darken this in here a bit more pressure so we get the um, a bit more of a, a shadow in that area there just bring some of this into here as well And then I'm going to go back in with that um, walnut brown. Um, okay, and then the brown ochre ten percent. Just want to come in and darken these off a little bit as well because they're not that. Uh, this is all a bit of a mishmash and a muddle in here, so I'm just going to switch back to that raw rumber. So we've got um, we've got half an hour. I was wondering whether we could actually get this finished. Um, right, I'm going to go back in with the uh, dark sepia. Let's just get a little bit of this dark sepia in here as well. is really quite dark up this side here you can see the whiskers standing out really nicely now Right, let's get this bit down here uh, sorted. So we've got this bit that's sort of um, kind of coming through here. This is still the dark sepia that I'm using here. Got that bit there. Let's just bring this little bit down in here. in doubt put a little bit of a tuft on it um <laughs> it's like when you're drawing uh you know ho horses with big long forelocks and whatever if in doubt just cover everything with the mane and the forelock and you don't have to worry about it a little bit of that in there and then i'm just going to do the same Okay, so um, let's just go over the entire um, back of the cat with the raw umber. Um, nice and softly on the edge there. I 
following the direction of the fur. You can see how nicely those whiskers have turned out. Actually drawing them in the the fur, um, you know, rather than sort of sc sort of scribbling the um, uh, the base in on the back, well, kind of scribbling the base on the back, um, but just you know, just be aware of where the fur goes because even though we're putting sort of like a solid colour in, um, whatever you put in over the top is going to f is going to kind of pick up on any texture that you've you've got going on there so it's always best to sort of follow the the direction of the fur it's a little bit lighter there which is fine and through the back there This fur here starts to come this way. I'll leave the tail. I won't put the um, the raw umber on the tail. And then we're just going to come again, just kind of being really mindful of the, even though we're speedy, we're still being mindful of the direction of the fur. It's a little bit ropey in places, but it's fine. Nice and speedy. Okay, so then I'm going to use the uh, dark sepia, I think, and then we're going to come in with some of that walnut brown as well. So I'm going to come in with the dark sepia first, um, up on the top here, and we're just going to start to bring in. So watch that you don't end up with a big sharp outline around the cat's face because you still want it to be nice and soft. And we're just going to kind of come up onto the top here. Again, we just want to sort of let it just drift off. Just drift off the top there. So I've got new glasses on and um, I've got their, their very focals. So um, where, where I'm thinking I'm drawing and everything's looking really nice and smooth, it's actually not when I look at it in the right, <laughs> through the right part of the lens. So I'm thinking, oh, we've got some nice smooth bits here. No, it's, um, they take a little bit of getting used to, but I think, I think, the, I think I'm gonna like them because it means I can get really, really up close if I want to. Uh, by using the bottom of the lens and sit back and look at it through the top of my lens so actually it does work quite nicely but it's just kind of remembering um, you know how to kind of look through them just pulling those through there Bring a little bit of walnut brown in there as well to um, to get a bit of warmth in there. And then we just come come down, and then the. Uh, hair changes again down here and then we 
go into this bit here. I'm going to bring some colour back in over the top just to sort of blend it. Just getting these in to begin with. So I've got quite a dull pencil that I'm working with now, um, and that's fine for what I'm doing now. Um, I do tend to work with duller pencils rather than the uh, the more sharp ones. Okay, I'm just going to bring a little bit of this over onto the to the top there. This one looks like a dinosaur this shape. And again I'm just going to bring some of this colour down the side. I'm then going to go in and kind of burnish and, um, and blend it. And we're going to add a little bit more colour into here. Again, just using the pencil in that sort of upward motion just to get that idea that the um, these shapes kind of sit underneath these layers of, of hair. Of course it's you know it's, a, it's sketchy and it's a little bit you know messy in places but that's kind of the the whole the joy about these kind of um, pieces that we're, we're just not we're just getting colour down and we're just getting form down and it's just quite nice. That's the um, edge of the tail there. And then let's just get this little shape into here. And this one in here and then I'm going to just come back in again with some colour. around that edge there okay so I'm going to bring a little bit of the um, brown ochre in so slightly harder pressure and we're just burnishing it a little bit blending it a little bit Into there, and then I'm just going to bring a little bit of that warmer colour down through into there. And then bring some of that brown ochre 10% down into here as well so we get that sort of yellowy colour coming down okay and then I'm going to bring the um, raw rumba 10% in
can just bring a few of these little fur details into there as well. I think, think I want to just darken up these dark areas a little bit. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite tricky to get um, your darks dark on this paper, I have to say. And then I'm just going to darken up this little bits down here as well. And then I'll bring, I think I'll bring the black in, darken those areas up. I think we'll get the tail in first, and then come back and just um, just tweak areas. I'm just going to bring this raw rumber 10% down here. Get a little bit of that in there. I've got a little bit of toe in there as well, look. A little bit of pour in there. Okay, and then I'm going to bring the um, the um, dark sepia in. So we're just going to start at this edge here and just bring in nice and gently. Gently, gently. So we can darken this up again um, as we, uh, when we finish, I'm going to bring the black in over some of these, these um, darker areas. But again, just as where the fur grows, we're just kind of going to bring that in with the tail here. It's sort of fluffy on the top there. It's coming around. So the um the the hair on the tail tends to be. Well, it looks a little bit longer than the actual kitten. So it's okay if we do longer pencil strokes on this. sitting on top of that little paw there and then it's, it's wrapped around. I left that bit white there. <laughs> okay, let's just bring this little toe in here. And a little bit of a shadow in there. I'll bring a little bit of that um, brown uh, ochre ten percent in there. Um, and then I think we get the black, and then we just start to just darken bits up a little bit. So I've got the black here. Um, just going to bring a little bit of dark into the face in here. Um. 
just go gently and just sort of darken up some of these areas. And we can go a little bit darker in here. I'm having to push a little bit harder with my pressure here just to get the um, the darkness to come through. And this is because I'm using quite a smooth paper. I think that's one of the reasons why I don't get on with smooth paper as much is because I do have to put quite a lot of pressure um, onto my pencils to get the depth and the burnishing and everything, which is, I don't really enjoy doing that because it hurts my hurts my joints, hurts my wrists. So I like to use paper that, uh, or surfaces that um, I can use really, really gentle pressure. And that's pastel map basically and, and drafting film. That's why I really like those ones because I don't have to put a lot of pressure onto my um, wrist. And when you're drawing quite, a, well, I don't draw as much as I, I'd like to draw, but when you're drawing sort of quite long hours, it, um, you know, if you're using quite hard pressure, it can, I mean, I had to. I ended up having to have um, uh, physiotherapy when I used <laughs> did a portrait on hot pressed paper, and I had to get a physio. Was it my shoulder went? Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit darker up in that top corner there. Um, let's just. a little bit darker into here Let's get that um, brown ochre ten percent in there as well. Vinny, you've been a very good boy. Okay, and then just darken these bits up a little bit. So I think this kind of thing is um, is quite good. You know, if you if you sort of if you haven't got an awful lot of time to draw, doing something like this where you can get an outline down, so you don't have to worry about getting proportions and everything like that, and then just you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours layering and and everything. You can keep that for when you've actually got time to be able to um, to do it. But you know, you can still create really great pieces um, quite speedily. And I think it, it's, you know, just drawing, just just the drawing process is, uh, is just so brilliant. Okay, I'm just going to go up into here a little bit. And then we'll get that tail finished. And then um, let's just get this tail a bit darker. Again, just make sure you get those hair strokes 
so that they are actually going in the right direction. A bit harder going this way it's um it's more natural to go the other way this little bit up here as well and just bring a little bit more And then I'm just going to get that walnut brown. Let's bring it up a bit more. Okay. Yeah, Vicky's just um, Vicky's just sent me a. Uh, a message just to say if you if you have got some questions please do do ask them because i can i can do a bit of a q and a at the end if you want um very happy to do that um you know so if you've got any burning questions that you want to ask me we can we can do a bit of that just using this walnut brown just to warm up some of these little areas here So I, I really hope you've enjoyed um, this. There's quite a lot of us drawing together, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, I, I do hope that you've enjoyed doing it. it. It's this. This is a. This is a. Obviously, a different way of drawing. It's a speedy way of drawing. But you end up with something that's quite nice, quite quickly. Um, you know, um, and um, and it's just nice to all draw draw together. You know, thinking about all of the people that. I mean, how many have we've got? We've got 1,350 people all drawing together, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, that just makes me so happy that people are sitting there doing, well, either watching it or drawing along. Um, it's just wonderful, absolutely wonderful, because, you know, as much as, as drawing is, is great, it's also really, really great for, um, you know, our mental health and everything like that as well, and just kind of keeping us from, from you know, thinking about everyday stuff um it's just a it's just such a lovely thing to do so i, I do hope you've enjoyed it um and if if you're planning on joining me in the academy in september and you're thinking oh my goodness we're going to be drawing at the speed of light um <laughs> every time we, we're not um although some of my members will tell you that i'm lying we're not going to be drawing at the speed of light it's going to be um uh, you know much 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 slower pace should we say um but um maybe we should draw like this all the time get loads of stuff done so just coming in over the top with this walnut brown which is just it's just helping to soften everything out a little bit um oh gosh now what have we got people what's he doing hmm. not sure what's going on outside So coming down here and then I'm just going to add a little bit of the walnut brown into here as well which again it's just going to sort of soften it a little bit soften 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 
remember to look through the right part of my glasses otherwise everything looks beautifully blended and then let's just come through here as well again just soften soften And the other thing as well is if you haven't signed up already, I've got 500 and something people signed up next Sunday. Um, I'm doing the Jelly Baby Tree, which it was just amazing. We, we did it in the academy and it's it's the most, it's a brilliant, brilliant concept. And it's basically about um, not necessarily goal setting, but almost plans or figuring out where you are now, where you want to be, that kind of stuff and um it's going to be more an interactive so it's going to be on zoom but it's going to be a lot of fun um so uh i'm looking really really looking forward to that um and then of course the academy opens a week oh my goodness a week tomorrow the academy opens so if you if you fancy joining me um i've had a lot of questions actually about the academy oh gosh you know i'm i'm, I'm a beginner i don't i'm i'm not very I'm not very good yet does it matter um and that's the that's exactly um what the academy was made for was for for people who are just starting out and wanting to learn to draw because i've created a 40 hour course you don't have to do the 40 hour course but i've created a course um especially for beginners that goes through all of the basics and gets you drawing on different um uh, surfaces and um that's basically uh, you know sort of part of the academy and then I do lots and lots of live streams like this kind of thing we have art club every Tuesday um, I do confidence sessions which are the most amazing sessions they're just fantastic and anybody who joins the academy you've got all of that stuff from a year ago you've got everything available to you so you can watch it back um, and I've also started to do a little bit of guided meditation as well which I really enjoy um, I'm going to be doing more of that just as sort of sessions that you can listen to if you want to. Um, and then I've got stuff for business as well. So, and it's such a fantastic community. It's uh, honestly the loveliest people. It really is. It's, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful place. Oh, and I do my critiques as well. So I do, um, 25 critiques a week, um, which is a really valuable resource actually, if you're wanting to progress your work really really valuable uh, resource and up your confidence as well so um yeah i hope uh, i hope, I hope you, some of you all join me in there it's 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 a really it's an, an amazing place it's it's far surpassed anything that i thought it would be i have to say so i think we're pretty much there um which is amazing um i can't believe we've actually done it <laughs> <laughs> done it in two hours we've we've drawn a cat in two hours i was thinking we might get the nose done um which is uh, just brilliant so if any of you do have any questions um vicky i don't know whether you want to send me send me some questions through uh, i've got one here can i use a slice a slice tool on pastel mat um you, yes you can use a slice tool on pastel mat what i would say is use it for the right reasons so with when it comes to the slice tool it's a really brilliant uh, little tool on pastel mat don't use it to get fur marks use your pencils to get fur marks use it for things like um a little bit of texture here and there use it for you know if you've got like a white animal it's quite good for a white animal because you can get a little bit of texture uh you know kind of coming through um and use it for things on like leather it's brilliant on leather to just nick little bits out i used it on the little girl in the scarf that was it it worked really really well on the little girl in the scarf um because it um uh, and, and what i did was i used a wax pencil first i actually used my this Caran d'Ache um, full blender down first. Oh, Vinny, just lie down. Lie down. It chooses the bean bag to go round and round and round on. So this is the full blender. I use this first. It's a very waxy, heavily waxy um, blender. And um, I put this down first and then the, the slice tool works really, really well. So uh, yes, do that, but use it in the, use it in the right, in the right way. Um, is this my finished cat? Yes, it's my finished cat. I, I, once I've put my pencils down and say, this is it finished, I never go back. 
it goes in my drawer <laughs> and that's it <laughs> um so yes it will be my finished cat um how will i get the recording and own it so um what will happen is when i finish this recording here youtube will create a link for me i will then take that link and i'll put it in an email and everybody who has signed up will get an email with the link and you will then have that link forever and you can watch it whenever you want um so that's how that works um so colors vary to mine honestly it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all when it comes to drawing um sort of like somebody's pet then yes color oops color can be important or color color is important but it's not that important the most important thing when you're drawing and you're trying to get realism is to get the values so you want to get your lights and your dark so that you can actually get something that looks like it's um real that that's the most important part when it comes to uh, i would say if you're looking at three the three important factors of um uh, realism i would say the most important is value the second important although it's not that important are details and the third important bit is color because something can look really really real and not be you know can be uh, random colors um so don't get fixated on choosing your you know the exact same colors it really really doesn't matter um i haven't had a bill to join the academy oh the um so the academy uh, opens next uh, monday so if you want to join um everything will be uh, available to join then so you can join from midnight on the 5th um if you want to if you want to join me um yeah and and also i'd really really love to see your um to see your cats um on the internet as well um i've got a, a color pencil group that i'd love you to join too which is the uh, bonnie snowden's color pencil group so do join that um and you can tag me uh, you can put a hashtag on your kitten drawing and you can put a hashtag um live kitten drawing um hashtag live kitten drawing or hashtag what would it be hashtag bonnie's live kitten drawing something like that i'll find it um but it'd be really really nice to see your pieces and it'd be um you know it'd be lovely lovely to see them all together um so i'm just kind of coming through here all i'm doing here is i'm just kind of building up these shadows a little bit just to get a, an idea of some of these fluffy bits um uh, the academy then opens in january so the beginning of january that's when the next so the academy opens next monday on the 5th of september and then if you miss that one um it then opens on the um 3rd of january i think um so yeah so i i hope everybody's enjoyed this uh, i'm going to come and have a look at some of your your comments in a minute i'm going to sort of step away from here um it's been really really fun this is one of the the things that i I just absolutely love to do is my live drawing i could do this each and every day <laughs> i really could oh i think as well i may well be doing a live draw on facebook at some point on next monday um it's not going to be a draw along but i'm whatever i'm whatever is on my drawing board um i will be i might go live so you know if you want to kind of pop over onto my facebook um and come and uh come and join me and ask some questions and everything there as well you you can do um not sure when it's going to be it's my daughter's birthday so she's booked me out <laughs> we've got to go going for breakfast and everything but um there'll be a there'll be a period during the day where i um i just pop on and do some live drawing i think um which again will be quite nice but i this is i love doing this i love helping people i love teaching people um different um different techniques and everything it just it, it's just fantastic and then seeing people progress uh is, is amazing absolutely amazing so um yeah so i'm i'm hoping um you've really really enjoyed this um your link will come through to you i think it will it'll be tomorrow unless i can get it done today um and it will be sent by email so if you haven't seen anything by tomorrow evening just check your spam and your other folders because it doesn't always come through um, into your inbox um 
and um, thank you all. Thank you all ever so much. I've really, really, really enjoyed this session. Um, you know, it's been it's been really fun um, drawing this little kitten. I'm absolutely gobsmacked actually that we got it finished. <laughs> A whole cat in two hours. Um, it's been amazing. Um, let me just have a quick look at some of these. Um, so, uh, okay, so I've just seen a couple of a couple of little questions on there, which I'll just answer um, very quickly. Um, how does the um, academy compare to? Patreon is very very different to Patreon. Patreon is changing um, from the first. I won't be adding any new content. Um, the Academy has a full course. So it has my coloured pencil foundations course which basically if you're a beginner, well anybody really, but, but particularly somebody who's um, new or just wants to refresh their skills. Um, I've got my coloured pencil foundation course which is eight modules um and there's some exclusive tutorials in there including my german shepherd tutorial uh, tutorials on drawing eyes on drawing uh, noses on drawing different types of fur and using the different techniques and tools and everything that we use uh, or that i use um and then i have all of my live streams so i have art club i have confidence session i have my skills club which is a really fabulous session it's turning into it's my mastermind session and what we do is i set a um i set a challenge and people draw the challenge without any input from me and then we discuss it as a group of artists what's worked what colors they've used what surfaces you know how, how it's all worked basically um and that's a really really great discussion to have you have beginners complete beginners doing it and you have more seasoned artists and it's fantastic to to have a conversation with somebody at a different level because you can you can get so 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 much out of that um, and I have my business drop in as well. So if you're wanting to kind of a little bit more help with social media or, you know, anything like that, my business drop in is there too. Um, and, and my critique. So I critique 25 pieces a week. So that's like usually over a hundred a month. Um, and, and that in itself is, is just like, it's such a good resource to have, uh, because it means that you can really start to develop, um, you know, your, um, your drawing style. Um, uh, and Patreon just has a just has the tutorials. Um, the other thing about the the academy is that it's a um, it has a searchable video hub, um, so you can actually search within the video, um, and which is amazing. So if you searched something like cat whiskers, what would happen is it would pull up all of the videos that I've mentioned cat whiskers in and it will actually give you the exact place in the video to go and have a watch of it. So you could sit there and just go, I really, really need to understand more about cat whiskers. And you could go through a whole load of videos, exactly the right place where I mentioned them and just listen to what I have to say about cat whiskers. Um, and that again is quite, it's an exclusive thing, um, uh, you know, for the Academy. I've, I've chosen a, a platform that does that for us. Uh, it's it's a brilliant brilliant resource it really really is and also the um the navigation is much much easier everything's in playlists so everything sits there on a playlist you've got everything like this month's videos cats dogs horses wild animals i've started to do flowers now and i've started to do humans so there's a whole raft of different subjects within there which is you know which is brilliant um and it's all on these little these playlists so it's very very easy to find um and i also have a calendar um that you can sync to your own calendar too so it's it's a really really super 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 um platform and one that i'm kind of sort of you know, working on um, all of the time. Um, let me have another quick look. Um, I, can't, I, can't, I can't actually see, to be honest, <laughs> with my silly glasses. I'm, I'm looking for the questions. I can't actually see any of them. Um, but um, I think I've probably kept you quite long enough um, I want to say thank you all so, 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 so much for joining me. It's been absolutely brilliant. It really has been um, a super afternoon. Um, I'd love to see 
uh, like I say, some of your some of your pieces. So if you if you tag me and join the group and everything, and um, yeah, thank you all ever so much. Hopefully, I'll see some of you uh, next week for my jelly baby tree, and hopefully, I'll see some of you within the academy as well. But for now, um, I want to say thank you all so much, and I'll see you all soon. Okay, bye. <laughs>